Come on, I don't wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Come over! Come over. Come over. The Troy of Ali Dawa! The Troy of Ali Dawa! Ali Dawa! They put him on Troy! I'm over! Seriously, Let me come over. Wait for some car film on that. Just have your assurance. How do we have a shot? I'm going to go over there beside it. You can't see nothing. I'm not sure if we'll be back there. I'm he kept warning his disciples, we're going to Jerusalem. The Son of Man is going to be crucified. He's going to be scourged. He's going to be mocked. And on the third day, he will rise again. And he rose again on the third day. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let me, uh, let me save my voice though for the main event. Where's Banksy? Let me get Banksy yeah, over. Right? Yeah, yeah. Banksy's a cunt. I'll be doing this throughout the day. Bald-headed cunt. This will be the first uh, service uh, of a, uh, let's say, say, giving Ali Dawa uh, basically the justice of the Raj. First serving. I'll be giving sermons throughout the day. So I'll, put, I'll actually put my case forward as to why I believe Ali Dawa to be banned from the park. Uh, let me just wait for, um, what is it called, uh, Banksy to come along with you. Banksy's a fucking knob. This wizard? Is he banned? He's a wizard. I thought Banksy, I heard he was a kiddie strangler. Ali Dawa. It doesn't matter. Whether he's here or not, he's irrelevant. I wasn't going to talk to him anyway. Though. I wasn't going to talk to him anyway. He's going to say I'm harassing him. I'm going to be giving a speech about him and why I believe he's not fit to be in the park. You want me to get Banksy? Yeah, Banksy. And DJ Rizzo as well, please. Fuck Banksy. Cocksucker. What's his over there? So he was in the heart of the earth. And don't get heckled too much, but don't get caught in the head. They're going to start heckling you. Just ignore them. Yes, it'll be, I'll be doing a couple of speeches about the day. This is the first serving. It's going to be like three times I'll give the same speech. Basically. Each time better than the last, so you can watch all of them. Make, make us proud. Make us right, proud. Right, right. 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 Someone fund my wires, please. Everyone thinks I'm getting paid. Look at this. Do you want to hold it here? Let me just uh, wait a minute. Yeah, just give it a minute. I'll wait until uh, Banksy in the month. Fuck Banksy, the gay lord. Uncle Jamal. Should have probably. Uh, oh, dear. Very racist. Oh, dear. I've got one of them for you. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Good. I'm going to do it a couple of times anyway, so don't matter. It's fucking King Banksy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Banksy. King. No, King. He's, he's the King. Oh, no, faggot Banksy. Don't get confused with a thing about Banksy's, yeah? It's Banksy style. Faggot Banksy. Yeah, but, you know. I'm going to get sued. Come the other one got his name from this one. He's not the artist. <laughs> That's it, that's I haven't bought any boats recently, I just want to let everyone know. Okay, Banksy style is here, man, you'll get a big craft now. Right? You'll get a big craft. Yeah, that's what it Banksy's is. Banksy's boat died, didn't it? There you go, there you go. Just hold it. If the numbers stop, that means the recording stops. Because you didn't realise there's a shitload of people that want to get on that boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Okay, everyone listen! Oh. Yeah! Listen! Yeah. Today, I'm going to put Ali Dharma on trial. As long as my voice is here today, I will speak the whole day. So hopefully my voice will last. 
I've got a couple of sermons to give. Maybe two or three. Yeah, I'm actually preaching to the to the converted already. But, but the people watching, I'm gonna put my case forward that Ali Dawa is not fit for speaker's corner. That's right. Yeah, I've done a I've done a petition. We've got 300 signatures. Well done, everybody. Well done. Well done. Well done. Obviously, I don't think that a petition is going to do anything. It's bullshit. It's more symbolic. And it's more about the point of showing that this guy is somebody that is promoting certain things that I'm going to put out today. Now, you know I'm serious when I've written something down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know it's serious. I didn't know. I know. I know. So the reason I've done it is because I don't want to be said that that I am actually um, not giving them justice. Everything I'm going to read is verbatim what they said. So they cannot deny it. I actually spent time uh, writing down exactly what Ali Dawa has been saying and what my, the rest of those guys have been saying on the video. So they cannot deny it. I've got video footage as well, if people want to watch it, just in case you don't believe my actual transcript. Now, the thing about this place is that it is about free speech. Everybody That's should it. be allowed to come here and express their views. The problem is this, certain individuals, uh, this is not towards the Muslim community. Any Muslims here that believe that everybody should be allowed to come without being threatened with violence and their family being docked, you are not the people that I'm talking to. I am talking to the people that are constantly saying to me, I'm not allowed to go to the park, X, Y, Z, otherwise your family's gonna get hurt. So indirectly, they're threatening kind of like, why can't we come to the park that my family will get hurt? Now, the thing is, if you've got a problem with me, I would deal with it myself. Whatever happens to me, happens to me. I've laid my, I've, I've laid my bed and I'll lie in it. But my mother, my sister, uh, my disabled sister, my nephew and everybody has got nothing to do what I'm doing. And when you start putting my family's pictures out there, my home address and stuff like this, what you're doing is indirectly putting my family in danger. And this has come from Ali Dawa and Muhammad Ijab. Yeah, and I will prove it that they are using Islamic scripture to dox people and to justify uh, attacking women. And I'm going to start firstly with the petition I wrote. I don't know why I'm blaming at Banksy, he's not the main character. I should be thinking of my own. But basically, basically that's a lot of Banksy's style. That, that hurt, man. That hurt so, my So basically, I'm going to first read Good, you faggot. the petition I've done, which has got 300 signatures. Wow, great. So. The petition is ban Ali Dawa from Speaker's Corner for promoting paedophilia and killing apostates. Yeah? So I prominent this is exactly what I've written down on there. Go to the um, actual um, petition and sign it. It doesn't really make any difference, but it does is a symbolic uh, kind of like, um, let's just say kind of a gauge of what people believe, whether they agree with me or not. Now people have done the petitions to get me rid of the parts in response. They've got like five signatures, so well done, well done. Get it up to 10 and I might be impressed. Now, um, this is what I've written. I do, before I go on, I don't really care if Ali Dawa comes here. I don't, this was never for Ali Dawa, this is from the public. My point is, if Ali Dawa is allowed to come here, then why am I not allowed to come here? Because I'm gonna set out, he has said stuff and done stuff, that is a million times worse than me, and it's something that I believe could be criminal if he went over the line just a slight bit. He was very clever how he said it. So I've written on the petition, a prominent YouTuber by the name Ali Dawa has expressed views about children as young as nine being adults and so can have sexual relations with people who are much older than them. He's expressed on two occasions on camera, which is on YouTube at Speaker's Corner in London, that he does not see anything wrong with sexual relations with children. The first time was in 2018, when he was asked, would he allow his nine-year-old daughter to marry and have a sexual relationship with a 40 plus year old man? His answer was very disturbing as he replied that if she is menstruating, but she is then old enough to make the decision to get married and have sex with a 40 plus year old man. Yeah, I've got the video on there. The second time was last week when I was here and I saw it with my own eyes and it's disgusting. He was asked, the second time was on the 30th of the 8th, 20, where Ali Dawa was questioning about whether a nine-year-old girl 
could have sexual relations with an older man? He replied, yes, as he said, if the girl hit puberty, she is now an adult. Yeah? On both occasions, he did not specify that this was unacceptable in today's age, but stated that it's permissible even today. As a public figure with a YouTube channel with over 475,000 subs, he's a massive influence on the Muslim youth. I'm also concerned that Ali Dawa, being at Speaker's Corner with young children, sometimes attending is problematic then, as he has stated that he sees nine-year-old girls as adults, so he should not be around them as he does not see them as children. Ali Dawa has also called for apostates to be executed to leave Islam and promote this on his channel to young, impressionable Muslim youth. Now, that is the bit that I'm going to go over. The first bit will be about the paedophilia. The second bit about killing apostates. And the third bit about bullying and the fact that him and Muhammad Ijab have given the gateway to allow people to bully people by using scriptures as a justification. Now, I'll go through that bit first just because it's the easiest, yeah? So, Muhammad Ijab and Ali Dawa have been having a problem with a guy called a prostate prophet. Now, I don't agree with a prostate prophet in a lot of things, but his family should not be attacked because of what he's doing. Now, Muhammad Ijab started posting a prostate prophet's wife, picture, and asking, would you have sex with, a, with your 21-year-old son? Also saying she should wear a burqa. Also threatening like indirect sexual threats. Now, when his Muslim brothers salute you to the Muslim brothers that called him out, called him out and said, why are you doing this? Why are you bringing an innocent woman into the situation? This was his response, verbatim. This is Twitter and you can go on there. He said, why so harsh against the enemies of Islam? Using sexual references has precedent in the religion to anti-Muslim enemies, yeah? I do not accept the narrative that only dead people can be mocked. I found that the enemies of Islam cannot handle this kind of heat and has demoralized them like nothing before. Obviously, people love their families. And so when people are attacking my family now, I blame you for using this. Yeah? You then put an hadith, I think it's from Bukhari, and it explains why you can use sexual innuendos or sexual threats to your enemies. And this is Muhammad Ijab. I am not saying uh, this is okay. Muhammad Ijab is. So don't go after me, ask him why he put it up. So um, in Ibn Hajar said in al Qatar the Arabs used to insult with this expression, with the word in mother. Go suck the clitoris of your mother. So Abu Bakr wanted to exaggerate in insulting Irwa by placing what Irwa worshipped in the position of his mother. And he did so because of being angered by the statement that the Muslims would flee and leave the Prophet alone. So there is a permissibility of uttering offensive words to scorn someone who did something by which he deserved. Ibn Mohana says, in the words of Abu Bakr, there is a depreciation of the enemy and discrediting them. That's why they're doing what they're doing to me. But what will happen when you do it to me, I will go 10 times harder back. The only reason I'm here is because of the shit that you guys are doing against my family and my temple. My temple and my family have got nothing to do with what I do. you got a problem with me, go for me. And I blame Ali Dawa and Muhammad Ijab for it for putting this kind of stuff up. Now, when it comes to... Oh, white man. How much are you paying? A white man, don't worry. How much are you Your atrocities in India is enough. Take it. Now, Take it. I'm going to now read out what exactly Muhammad is. my payment. Yes. What Ali Dawa said about children. Now, in 2018, he was having a conversation with Tommy Robinson. And Tommy Robinson asked him if there was a 12 year old girl that started puberty, would she be okay to have sex? With, uh, with and marry. Ali Dawa said, and this is verbatim, if she started puberty, if I'm not mistaken, when you go on Google and write it, what is an adult? It states that anyone that started their menstrual cycle, so they're an adult, basically when you start having puberty. I've checked on the NHS, and the NHS has said this, most girls start their periods when they're about 12, but they can start as early as eight. So it's important to talk to girls from an early age to make sure they're prepared before the big day. A, having a period or menstrual cycle is a process. 
it could take up to four years. So just because somebody starts their period, it doesn't mean you can have sex with them. It's a long period. So someone could start it when they're nine and won't finish until they're 14 or 15. Now, last week I was over there and Ali Dawa was asked, is nine an adult, a nine-year-old girl? He said, yes, yes. Then he was asked again, is nine-year-old an adult? He said, yes, yes. Anybody else said that, they'd be locked up. A nine-year-old is not an adult. It doesn't matter what time frame it is. Now, in 2018, he had a conversation here, and this is the most problematic one. This is exactly what he said. He said to an individual, you know in Islam, if you ask, would we allow my daughter to marry a nine-year-old? Do you do, do you know why not? You ask me, would I allow my daughter to get married at nine? He says, I'm not saying the analogy is wrong, as our teachers teach us that a woman has to be sexually, mentally and physically ready. That means that if my daughter got into menstruation, and if my daughter reached the age of menstruation at nine years old, I would say you're ready. This is what he said on camera, verbatim. And the guardian said, I said, he said, one second, please. You are ready to get married. However, but if she says that I don't want to get married, the individual, another individual asked, but say if she wants to get married. He says, if she's nine years old, and if she says she's ready to get married, I will have to check if she's mentally ready and sexually and physically, yeah? And the guy says, hypothetically, if she says yes, he says, and if she's ready and she's found somebody, yeah, and the guardian says, and if a 40 year old comes, and if you've got a nine year old, he says this, and this is the worst damning part. Anybody that agrees with this, you need to be locked up. He goes, if a 40 year old man comes to me and my daughter and wants to get married, I will ask her, are you sure you want to get married? Yeah, if she says yes, I will ask her why. Because da 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 da. I'm doing that. Are you sexually ready? You'll ask her. Okay, Islamically, she can as a father. I have the right to say no. But if she wants to at that age, like I said before, in Islam, we don't have an age. We don't say 9, 8, 4, 5, 16, 20. So mentally, sexually, physically, so do you know why that's for? So he is promoting paedophilia. Yeah? Now, I will say this. I see paedophilia as um, uh, incitement to violence. Because when you say to somebody, you can have sex with a nine-year-old child, what you're doing is inciting violence against that child. Because that child is not ready to have sexual relations with a 40, whatever, 18, 19, whatever old man. Now, I'm not gonna go into the past. That's your business. But if you wanna start bringing the past up, it'll get messy. I'm talking about today and what Ali Dawa is saying. If you're a Muslim and you say, no, I don't agree with it today, you should condemn him. Now, when it comes to um, menstruation and stuff, I just got from the NHS um, what it is and everything else. I'm just gonna read a quick bit. It says stages of puberty. Puberty is when a child's body begins to develop and change as they become an adult. Girls develop breasts and start their period. Boys develop a deeper voice and facial hair will start to appear. The average age for girls to begin puberty is 11, while for boys the age is 12. But it's different for everyone. So don't worry if your child reaches puberty or after their friends. So you can see you can have girls as young as eight and stuff can hit puberty. So if your stand is by going by age and the puberty, then what's stopping you marrying that child? If Ali Dawa sees a eight-year-old, a nine-year-old child there and he says she's menstruating, what's stopping him from saying she can get married to a 40-year-old man that he knows? How do we know? You need to clarify Ali Dawa and you need to make it very clear what you mean by this. Now, the next situation is going to be about apostasy. Now, you say that there's no compulsion in religion. And you say that, and you say that, you know, people can leave your religion and go into your religion freely. But recently, Muhammad Ijab and Ali Dawa have set a precedent that basically, with a guy called Apostate Prophet, they were bragging about executing him under Sharia. And the video has 475 views. This is unacceptable. Basically, what he said, 
Uh, let me just look at this. 75 or 475,000? Uh, 475,000, sorry. So, this is exactly what he said in the video. So, a guy called Apostate Prophet. I don't agree with everything he does. So, I'm not for Apostate Prophet. But he has a right to live. Yeah? If he leaves his religion, he has a right to live. The thing is, uh, Ali Dawa said on August the 15th that there is a reason why there's a capital punishment. This is for apostasy. People like you, you little weakling, who leave their religion and cause disruption in the land by spreading it. The capital punishment will be applied to you. We have no doubt. We are proud of that. Not individuals going and doing it themselves like idiots. You're an idiot. Not under an Amri, so I don't know what it is, a mom or something like that. Yes, and we will be watching. We will be watching. So he's not only condoning um, execution of apostate, he's saying we're going to be watching and we're going to be relishing in watching you being executed for relieving your religion. Is that the religion of peace or the religion of peace is? Because if you're going to cause corruption in the land, he says, that's going to cause more damage to the society as a whole because Sharia did not come to protect individual rights. So he's confirmed that Sharia is not there for individual rights. It's about suppressing people and people do not have the freedom to leave or stay within the religion without being persecuted. And this is why you get lunatics like Banksy. You wonder why the ex-Muslims are so crazy. Because when they're reading that you want to kill them and everyone's saying it's okay, but you then get upset because they do X, Y, Z, don't like criticize it. We have to ask, are you mentally right in the head? What is worse? Is it worse to say something about someone's uh, religious figure or to murder a man? Because you guys are disrespecting your prophet. I know this other religion that get upset. Even Sikhs go mad sometimes. I don't blame them. We love our, we love our religious figures. But they don't want you to kill in their name because someone says something about them. Now, one of the things is that I didn't want to um, kind of delve too deep into the mindset of why people get so upset about people leaving the religion or apostasy. But somebody sent me an hadith. And I'm not going to lie, this hadith is one of the most shocking that I've read. And if anyone reads this, as a child, it's going to set them into a, a spiral of madness, in my opinion. Because this is the hadith. It goes by, narrated by Abdul Ayn Ibn Abbas. A blind man has a slave mother who used to abuse the prophet and disparage him. He forbade her, but she did not stop. He rebuked her, but she did not give up her habit. One night, she uh, began to slander the prophet and abuse him. So he took a dagger placed her on her belly, pressed her and killed her. A child who came between her legs was smeared with the blood that was there. When the morning came, the prophet was informed about it. He assembled the people and said, I adore by Allah, the man who has done this action, and I adore him by my right to him that he should stand up. Jumping over the necks of the people and trembling, the man stood up. He sat before the prophet and said, Apostle of Allah, I am her master. She used to abuse you and discourage you. I forbade her, but she did not stop. And I rebuked her, but she did not abandon her habit. I have two sons like pearls from her, and she was my companion. Last night she began to abuse and discourage you. So I took a dagger, put it on her belly, and pressed and killed her. Thereupon the prophet said, Oh, be witness, no retaliation is payable for her blood. Meaning that there was no repercussions. He agreed with it. If you agree with stuff like this, no wonder you have people like uh, Charlie Hebdo. No wonder people are going around trying to kill people for saying stuff, doxing their families and doing all of this. If you don't believe in this stuff, you need to clarify this is not from your religion. Because I don't believe Muslims believe this. But people like Muhammad Ijab and Ali Dawa are doing your religion as disservice. Ali Dawa should be questioned about his support for paedophilia. He should be questioned about his support for killing apostates. And he should be condemned with Muhammad Ijab for allowing people to attack people's families and then justify it through a hadith. It's a disgrace. Now I'm going to end it and I'll be coming back again for part two. Ali Dawa's over there. Okay, what? Ali Dawa's there. Give me a little bit of time to recover my voice and part two will be better. 
All right. Can I just have a few points on the... Let me just do it over there because I need to address my voice. I'm going to do it again later.